Hi everyone, this is Jason McGee, uh, and this is the third video in my series of videos on IBM Workload Deployer 3.0. Uh, in the previous video, I walked you through how you could deploy, using virtual application patterns, a simple web application to the cloud using Workload Deployer. Uh, in this video, what I want to do is take that same application and extend it a little bit by adding elasticity to the application, showing you how you can take that simple application and deploy it in a way that can automatically grow and shrink as needed to meet the demands that are placed on that application. So let's get started. If you remember from the previous video with Workload Deployer, to define the application to the cloud, you use a virtual application pattern. So what I'm going to do is go to the virtual application patterns and bring up the list of applications that I have configured on the cloud. Here you can see my list of applications. And at the top of the list, you see the DayTrader application that we defined in the previous video. This is the application that defined the basic structure of my application and its major components. What I want to be able to do is create a scalable or elastic version of that application. To do that, I'm going to clone the application and define a new application based on the one that I defined before. So I click the clone button in the upper right hand corner, I give the new application a name, um, and Workload Deployer will create a copy of that application that I can edit. This allows me to create this new scalable version without modifying the existing version that I had already. So now I have in the list the scalable day trader application. I can select that, um, and then I can edit that application by clicking the edit button in the upper right hand corner. When I edit the application, it brings up the virtual application builder again, and you can see the application model that we had defined previously with the web application, the database, and the link between them. Now, if I want to make this application elastic or scalable, um, I can do that simply by adding a scaling policy to the web application. You can see in the tool, there's a little plus button uh, near the web application. When I click that, I get presented with a list of policies that can be attached to the application. Policies represent optional behavior or configuration that you can attach to components of your application to change how they're deployed or how they behave. So in this case, we pick the scaling policy, and that gets added into my application. If I select that policy on the right, you can see I get a set of additional properties for the application that represent the scaling policy configuration. Um, for scaling policy, um, there's two fundamental properties, which is uh, the ability to enable or disable session caching. So do you want your HTTP session data to be stored uh, and cached in a way that can uh, be preserved as the size of the application changes? And second, a scaling type, which is the behavior you want or the resource you want to monitor um, that dictates how the application is changed over time as load increases or decreases. Um, you can set a static scaling type, um, which will just set a fixed number of instances for the application. Um, or you can pick a dynamic scaling type. And there are three that are currently supported with Workload Deployer. The first is a CPU-based scaling, um, where you set um, a CPU range, um, a, a minimum and maximum uh, CPU utilization rate, uh, a time threshold, so how quickly do you want to react to changes in CPU, um, and then a min and max number of instances. So you essentially can provide um, some some ranges that specify um, how the system should grow and shrink the application based on CPU utilization. Um, there's also a response time based policy which is very similar but uses um, application response time instead of CPU as the metric. And there's also a web to database policy which uses the combination of um, response time, uh, JDBC connection pool wait time, uh, and JDBC connection pool usage um, to dictate the growth of the application. So if any of those metrics uh, exceed the ranges specified, then uh, resources will be created or removed from the application. For this example, I'm going to use the CPU-based um, uh, scaling policy. I'm going to set a CPU range of 20% uh, on the low end and 80% on the high end, um, a timeout of 120 seconds, meaning um, if the CPU of the web application, the average CPU of the web application, goes above 80% for more than two minutes, um, then we'll add an additional instance of the application. If the average CPU utilization of the application goes below 20% for more than two minutes, then 
an instance of the application will be taken away. Um, I'm also going to set the range, and in this case I'm going to set the range, the number of instances, from 2 to 10, meaning that I will never have less than 2 instances of the application, and I will never have more than 10 instances of the application. So I set up that scaling policy, um, and I save the application. This is all I need to do to be able to configure um, scaling behavior for this application. If I save it and close the application builder, um, then I can go ahead and deploy this application to the cloud uh, in the same way that I did before. I simply hit the deploy button, give it a name, hit OK, and Workload Deployer will now commence with the provisioning of this application on the cloud. Now, unlike before, where I got a very simple configuration for the application, with the scalable application, I have a more complex topology that needs to get stood up. I have a collection of application servers to support the web application in a clustered configuration. Um, I still have my database. Um, I enabled session replication in this example so I need all of my session data to be stored um, outside the application in this case um, what workload deployer does is workload deployer has a caching service based on WebSer extreme scale that's always running in the cloud and as part of the provisioning workload deployer will automatically configure um, a space within that caching service to store all of the session data for this application that caching service is shared by all the applications, and Workload Deployer automatically handles the configuration of the application to send its session data to that caching service to create a space within that caching service to hold my sessions. And this enables um, all of the session data for this application to be preserved in the event of failures and in the event of the, the addition or removal of an application from the cluster. Um, we also, as part of this provisioning, configure our proxy tier to be able to route all of the incoming traffic to the collection of application servers that make up this application. Um, that proxy tier, again, like the caching service, is a shared service running in the cloud that all of the applications share, so a shared or common caching tier for all applications on the cloud. Um, and as part of the provisioning, we automatically configure that caching service so that it knows about this application that we've just deployed, it knows what URLs it handles, it knows what the endpoints are. Um, anytime we add or remove um, instances of the application on the cloud, the, the proxy service will automatically be notified about the changes in the number of instances that are out there. And as work comes into the system, the proxy service will be responsible for load balancing that incoming traffic across the members uh, of the cluster, across the instances of the application. Um, it will be responsible for detecting failures in that application and routing around those failures. And and providing the, the kind of load distribution and failure recovery behavior expected in a scalable application. So that's basically it. That's what's required to take an application that you've defined on the cloud and make it elastic. Really simple. You didn't have to understand clusters. You didn't have to understand how to set up products like WebSer Extreme Scale or proxies. You didn't have to figure out how to configure session replication settings. You didn't have to figure out how to define the clusters or manage the configuration. All of those details about uh, what the appropriate and best practices are for deployment of clustered applications and all of the work required to set up and configure the system was done for you automatically simply by adding a scaling policy to the application. That's the power of virtual applications and the power that Workload Deployer provides with the addition of policies to your applications. Thanks a lot.